Greetings and welcome back. David J. Kuhn with Qigong Awareness. Qigong for Beginners, your path to greater health and vitality. We are on to chapter nine. Chapter nine is entitled The Force. Uh, you know, we have to have a little bit of Star Wars in there because of Yoda. Um, Yoda is definitely a master on the level that he is portrayed as one in Star Wars. For my ally is the Force and a powerful ally it is. I don't have one of my sweatshirts or something right here with me, but we have on the back of our sweatshirts, it says, uh, you know, it says Qigong awareness on the front and on the back, it says, uh, harness the force. And this is that idea in Star Wars. And I'm here to suggest there is something to it. Uh, there's a lot to it and we can train it. Uh, you know, I find it interesting. Years ago, I watched The Karate Kid. And I saw Mr. Miyagi rubbing his hands together and doing some kind of energy work or something. And, you know, here I am uh, many years later known for that type of work and uh, doing uh, different types of healing work for people related to what people might think of as magic. And we're living in a time where, and I will tell you, a lot of this is being suppressed. Um, uh, but it's coming out anyway, you know, I mean, there, there are certain people, so to speak, who don't want you to know they're going to lose money over you knowing, um, I'll just say it like that. But, um, there, there's information coming out about, uh, you know, the fact that life is, is quite magical on the level that it is. I mean, uh, some of the stuff that we watch, Harry Potter, Star Wars, um, things like this, uh, all these ancient Kung Fu movies where the masters are dancing around on top of the bamboo at night and uh, running across, you know, water and so on. Anyway, these may be things that we're doing in the next 20, 50 years. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, very, very interesting stuff. So we enter into this idea of the force. And one of the things that I talk about in this particular chapter, and I give you an exercise for just to give a little bit of an idea. I talk about some different things and give you some different exercises. But one of the ones that I'll highlight is that a um, couple, actually a couple, I see two things I'd like to highlight. So one, one is this idea of not just qi, but this thing called jing. Jing means essence. And technically in oriental medicine and in Taoist practices, which make up um, a portion of traditional Chinese medicine, there's this concept of Jing or essence. And in order to have Qi, which is considered to be energy, which is associated with metabolism, it's associated with the solar plexus and digestion and metabolism. In order to have good metabolism, in order to have good digestion and so on, your Qi has to be strong. In Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, we call the area of the solar plexus the yellow court. We'll check out the color here in typically the uh, images that you'll see in uh, yogic medicine and so on. You'll see this in medical Qigong as well. And that solar plexus area, again, being referred to as the yellow court. And uh, we have some important organs here and so on that are uh, transforming the energy from food substance into energy substance. And in order to have, again, energy, qi, good metabolism, we need jing. When you see an older person, not necessarily an exact age, but most people these days, 70 years old, 80 years old, when you see them starting to hunch over and their bones are starting to crimple up and so on, crumple up, whatever you want to say, um, like I was at 25, anyway, um, you, you see the jing being depleted. And jing is also associated with a person's sexual energy. And when I say sexual energy, yes, I mean energy related to sex and sexual reproduction. But I also mean your vitality. Your, your fertility is connected to your vitality and your ability to procreate is created or sorry, is connected to all forms of creation, music, poetry, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, starting your own business, et cetera. And so one of the things that, uh, whether it's an entrepreneur or uh, like myself or others that are simply out there um, just living their lives, maybe 
have trauma from their childhood, um, maybe have uh, some old psychology that's really weighing heavy on their physical biology and they're sort of feeling defeated and so on. The steam is just out of them, right? That's not just a depletion in uh, Qi, that's a depletion in Jing. So in my school in particular, and there are some other schools that give a little more emphasis to this, but it's more hidden, I will tell you that. It's in more of the uh, more secret schools and, and older schools, let's put it that way. So any school that kind of talks about this is connected to a greater depth and an older lineage of Qigong practices and so on. Um, it comes back to this idea of rebuilding Jing first. And Jing is rebuilt in the lower Dantian. So when, if you study with me and you hear me talk about Qigong, it doesn't matter what program you take, I'm probably going to say something about the lower Dantian at least five times in any program that I teach. I'm going to speak to the lower Dantian and I'm going to give you exercises to practice to rebuild the Jing in the lower Dantian. And when people ask me, where should I start? Where should I begin? I always say nine times out of 10, you need to rebuild your Jing. Very few people come to see me who don't need to rebuild their Jing. So when they contact me for coaching or medical Qigong healing, I usually do a combination of both of those things for most people, um, or they're coming to my Qigong class, whatever the case may be. They're always asking me questions, right? How do I do this? How do I, I have this particular diseasement. I have this particular problem going on in my body. I have a lack of energy, yada, yada, right? So you have to rebuild your Jing. That has to do with lower Dantian. And in our certification program and the courses associated with the certification program and the classes that I teach, I get into greater details about how to do that. And I get into some of those details here in chapter nine, making sure I'm on the right chapter. I'm telling you the right chapter, but yes, chapter nine. And, um, and that, that leads us into not just the lower Dantian in terms of the force, which is very important, by the way, as I said already and alluded to, and I'm alluding to again, but also as we get into some of these chakra centers, and one of the ones that I talk about in particular, as I noticed in this chapter, is this number four, and I talk about a particular gland in our body, uh, uh, an endocrine gland that secretes particular hormones, which is called the thymus gland. And if you want longevity in your body, I mean, I think I look pretty good for 55. I'm not a vain person. It's not about vanity and so on, but I think I'm pretty healthy and pretty strong for 55. Let's put it this way. I'm pretty happy myself with where I'm at at 55. Would I like to be 10 years younger? Hell yeah. But at the same time, when I look around at people who stand next to me at my martial arts school or training who are my age or who are even half my age, I, I go, okay, I got something, you know, going on. I need to keep, I need to keep doing this thing that I'm doing. Right. And so, um, so anyway, everything's relative, but I, I make that comment. Right. And, um, I'm going to do my best to keep it right because at 25 years old they told me your spine looks like you're 85 i don't have pictures of myself right now to show you when i was 25 but there's a lot more hardship on my face um, there's a lot more pain on my face um in some ways i maybe had more youthful skin or something but um there was a lot of heaviness there that I don't have anymore, which thank God for that. That's like one of the biggest reasons to practice the Qigong. But one of the side effects in a good way is that if you could turn on some of these life hormones in your body, this is where I'm going with this, okay? If you could turn on some of these life hormones, you could turn back the aging clock. That's my whole point. And I'm doing the best to do it for myself. Um, but I also want to turn on as many of you as I possibly can because I, I just want to see what's possible, you know. I want to live happier, healthier lives to the best of our abilities. And if we can find a trick to do it, and we can um, have testimonials like the ones in the front of my book and I can keep adding to those. 
Uh, I just think this is a beautiful thing. And if we can avoid uh, needing to be in the hospital and avoid needing to go through painful procedures and so on whenever possible, I, you know, I think we should do it. So most medications are built and designed uh, based on how hormones function in the body, how the endocrine system works and how hormones come together to heal the body. So for example, in that thymus gland, we have what are called till, uh, killer T cells, which lice cancer cells. The thy uh, thymus gland, that is, sorry, the thymus gland, almost said thyroid, which is up in the throat here, but anyway, we'll say that for another time. But the um, thymus gland is, they used to think when, uh, when I was back in college years ago, uh, they were saying in some of my college courses that the thymus gland no longer had any function post 18 years old. Once you're 18 years old, it starts shriveling up and you start aging from that point going forward. That was the story that was told and is still told to, to a degree. Um, because the because of the shriveling up, which they don't know why, but because of the shriveling up of the thymus gland, a person starts aging and their chin starts shrinking. All right. So if we want to rebuild our gene, we want to rebuild our energy, we might want to tap into what's going on in the thymus glands. So we have a one technique. Um, there's others, but there's a technique called doorway to immortality because it's that idea of turning back on the thymus gland. So now they're starting to realize that the thymus gland, they're doing studies, and the thymus gland is actually showing that it still has an impact on uh people's health and like I said, including these things called killer T cells, which lice, which means cut in half, uh, essentially uh, cut in half or cut to some degree, the cancer cells. Um, so very, very important area of your body that you might want to turn back on, both for your youth and vitality and also to lice and kill those cancer cells. All right, so that is um, a little bit about chapter nine. I'll see you in the next video for chapter 10. Thanks guys.